Hello, I'm Lisa Giro from Feed Info and welcome to this Feed Info Perspective video interview. Today, I'm speaking with two stakeholders from BioIberica to tell us what is going on in the field of animal origin proteins, including advances in research, global markets, and biosecurity concerns. With us today, we have Xavier Cordova, who is the director of BioIberica's Animal Nutrition Business Unit, and we have Oriol Rouget, who is a product manager at the company. Hello, Xavier and Oriol. Thank you for joining me today. Could you please introduce yourself, Xavier? My name is Xavier Cordova. I'm a vet. I have studied veterinary medicine <laughs> several years ago. And right now, uh, I'm the responsible of Animal Nutrition Division as a director. My background uh, is working in research and development departments, production departments, sales and marketing departments, and uh, I have some knowledge uh, related with the nu animal nutrition. Well, that's my profile. A vet that is working in animal nutrition and in this moment is directing a division of animal nutrition. Now let's have the second speaker, Oriol. Oriol, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Oriol, Oriol Roger. I am a biotechnologist um, I am, and I've been working for Bio Iberica for the last more than four years. Uh, and I am the product manager of the animal uh, nutrition division. And basically, well, I'm in charge of the technical uh, knowledge and matter of, of the, our business unit and uh, giving support to our clients, our um, sales managers, um, um, and giving uh, technical advice of our, our products and uh, working in new developments as well. Firstly, I believe you have a landmark to celebrate. Bio Iberica Animal Nutrition is 20 years old this year. Xavier, for those who do not know your company, can you tell us a bit about Bio Iberica and your animal nutrition division and what you've been doing for the past 20 years? Uh, Bioverica is a company that started 45 years ago producing heparin, that is anticoagulant. Right now we are the first producer of heparin in the world. We have uh, nine plants in the world producing this drug, that is an essential drug to keep the human health. But moreover, we have another divisions like uh, the human health division. Human health division is a division that is working with uh, solutions to improve the health uh, in humans, uh, joint care products, steroid products, we have another division that is the companion animal division that is working uh, with uh, specialties for veterinary clinics to improve the health of pets, dogs, cats, horses. We have another division that is the division of plant health that is working also improving the health, but in this case of the plants. We are improving the health of the plants when the plants are suffering some such of stress, like could be an excess of water or a drug. Uh, moreover, uh, as uh, you asked me, we started 20 years ago with the Animal Nutrition Division. The Animal Nutrition Division started with the concept of respect uh, circular economy. We take benefit from some of the byproducts from other divisions, specifically uh, the heparin division, hydrolyzed proteins specifically. And uh, we convert these hydrolyzed proteins in products for animal feed respecting all the quality and safety standards. And we have created a product that is uh, Palio in this case, that is a product that has all the positive benefits of animal proteins, but with extremely high safety and an increased digestibility through our uh, hydrolysis process. The animal division the, uh, division is also a division that is focused always in uh, primary research. Always we want to know how our products are working. And for this reason, one of our main lines is research, research, and research. That's a very interesting background. So we know BioIberica specializes in developing hydrolyzed proteins and nucleotide products for animal nutrition. Can you give us some details about these additives and what the key benefits are for different species? Well, we are producing, as you said, hydrolyzed proteins. And these hydrolyzed proteins are obtained from uh, animal tissues where we preserve uh, the safety and the quality and these products contains inside uh, bioactive peptides. These bioactive peptides improve the health of the animals, especially the intestinal health that is necessary especially during the first uh, uh, period of life of the animals. 
obviously, as an hydrolyzed protein, an hydrolyzed animal protein is a product with a high digestibility and also high palatability and a very good amino acid profile. As a second, as, as you said, we have uh, nucleotides. Nucleotides are obtained from these extracts. These nucleotides uh, copy the concept used several years ago in um, uh, human uh, nutrition, specifically uh, infant formulas. We are supplying nucleotides like uh, a new nutrient that is not well known among the nutritionists that improve the health of the animals, improving the development of the immune system and also reducing the consume of antibiotics or for instance right now it's a good alternative to zinc oxide uh, that ha as everybody knows is, uh, has been reduced a lot the consumption uh, not only in European Union, all around the world. Now let's look at global growth. Looking at the global market for these products, are you seeing growth in the use of animal origin products across the world? Well, animal origin uh, products, specifically animal origin proteins, they have uh, some years ago, uh, in the, uh, around 2000, they have the problem with BSE, uh, mad cow's disease, that reduce a lot the consumption and also creates a big problem all around the world. But right now with the new uh, techniques, we have uh, made two things in, uh, with hydrolyzed proteins. In America, we take an animal origin protein. First of all, we improve the, not only the digestibility of the product through the, the, the hydrolysis, also we increase the biosafety. Therefore, our process increase the biosafety of the product and also our process improve the properties of the product, for instance, increase the digestibility and produce bioactive peptides. These bioactive peptides are coming from uh, animals, therefore are improving the health of the animals too. Well, from my point of view, uh, as I said, animal proteins are wonderful products if are treated in the correct way to improve the properties and to improve the biosafety. Compare it, for instance, with some uh, vegetable proteins that contain anti-nutritional factors. Certainly a promising future for this industry. Moving the next question to Oriol. As a business, I know you invest heavily in the research behind your product. What are the most exciting recent scientific findings from BioIberica scientists and those outside your organization emerging in the field of animal origin products? Well, in uh, BioIberica, it's, uh, in our company, research is one of the drivers uh, that, that move our company forward. And uh, uh, in that sense, we are always uh, looking to new opportunities, new products, uh, new research uh, for, for discovering of, of products uh, for animal, human, and plant uh, application. And in the case of the animal nutrition uh, business unit, that is the one that I represent, uh, well, as, uh, we are working with hydrolyzed proteins. Uh, Palvio is our uh, brand. Um, and our hydrolyzed proteins, uh, we have been proven for a long time that are uh, nice or high quality uh, proteins that improve uh, classical uh, productive parameters like production, uh, feed conversion rate, uh, average daily gain, uh, feed intake, even mortality, etc. But most interestingly, what we have recently uh, found is that our hydrolyzed proteins uh, impact positively to the gut morphology and the intestinal health of, of the animals. And, and more precisely, we have seen that our peptides in these hydrolyzed proteins interact specifically with the intestinal cells and promote the growth and development of these cells and even can affect positively, modify positively the gene expression of these cells uh, to express genes related to intestinal health, immunity, etc. etc. So at the end, uh, we have a, a, a hydrolyzed protein that uh, uh, will affect positively the intestinal tract of these, of, of these animals. And this is related to uh, one of our latest research that is that we have identified uh, the presence of uh, uh, some specific molecular compounds, bioactive peptides, that are uh, products of the enzymatic hydrolysis that we perform into our porcine intestinal mucosa. And these bioactive peptides are uh, protein fragments that beyond their nutritional activities, they have uh, uh, the capacity of uh, uh, doing a biological activity that will impact positively to the intestinal health of these animals. Um, 
in, in the case of nucleotides, which is our uh, other product, uh, nucleotides are also uh, known uh, compounds, spe especially for the human industry. Uh, what we did uh, was to bring this concept of human industry to the animal nutrition industry. And basically, nucleotides are uh, nutrients, semi-essential nutrients, that are really, really important um, in young animals. Uh, nucleotides are nutrients that are uh, uh, very positively when they are used in, in young animals because they have uh, an effect in uh, tissue growth, cell replication, cell multiplication, etc. etc. Uh, for this reason, uh, it is very important uh, to use them as, 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 as soon as you can. And, and what we have uh, seen surprisingly, thanks to our research, is that the best application for uh, nucleotides is when we apply them before the animals are born. And, and this is very interesting because this means that you have to apply the nucleotides uh, through the parents. And doing this, we, can, we have seen that the power of these nucleotides travels um, either through the milk or through the eggs, uh, in fish, in shrimps, in, in, in swine, in, in poultry as well. Uh, and the young animals, before they are born, they can benefit from the effects of these uh, nucleotides. And once they are born, they will grow faster, they will be stronger, they will be more resistant to stress. And, and this is probably the, the key of, of the product and of our research. I feel an area people interested in these products might be thinking about is the issue of biosecurity. Oriol, how do you ensure animal origin products are fully safe? Biosecurity for Bioiberica is and has always been uh, uh, really, really important. Uh, as you know, we work with uh, animal-derived animal ingredients and animal tissues from uh, the circular economy. So we have always been very sure about our processes and our biosecurity. For us, it is really important because we manufacture not only products for animal nutrition, but only products for the pharmaceutical industry. It is true that nowadays uh, biosecurity is a key topic because we have had uh, several disease outbreaks, um, both in the human and the animal industry. Uh, but for Bioiberica, it has always been um, uh, something really, really important. Um, in our case, we have uh, a very strong uh, biosecurity scheme that we call the 60 year safety. And basically, it's a, it's a scheme to uh, guarantee the full biosecurity of our animal derived uh, ingredients and, and products. Uh, first of all, when we speak about uh, our hydrolyzed proteins, but also about the heparin, uh, uh, we collect this uh, porcine intestinal mucosa only from healthy pigs, uh, from disease-free European uh, countries. Um, and, and these pigs are also fit for human consumption. So the same pigs that we obtain the meat for is, are the same pigs where we obtain this, this porcine intestinal mucosa. All the slaughterhouses where we source these raw materials are inspected uh, uh, by official veterinary services, of course, and the pigs are inspected ante and post-mortem for their health. Um, and then we also have a strong system to avoid cross-contamination, uh, where we use direct uh, mucosa collection, uh, exclusive uh, mucosa transportation to our factories, and direct uh, uh, mucosa discharge, so we can avoid full cross-contamination. We don't have any contact uh, with other products, etc., etc. Um, and this is about the supply chain. But once the mucosa is in our factory, uh, we perform a, a series of, of uh, manufacturing process. And the first one is the, um, our uh, specific enzymatic hydrolysis named Engineer, that is a technology proprietary for, uh, from Bioiberica. And basically, this technology uh, is based on enzymatic hydrolysis. And what we do, what we achieve, is that we break down the proteins in the mucosa uh, to a very, very small uh, particle size. We are speaking about size uh, below 10,000 uh, Dalton. Uh, this is a very, very small uh, size of protein. If we analyze the size of a virus or of a prion that are pathogenic, pathogenic structures, uh, we will see that uh, the sizes are completely different. So after the enzymatic hydrolysis, everything that comes from animal tissue is destroyed is hydrolyzed to a level that is completely completely safe and this is why these products are authorized um, in the european in the european union and all over the world um, uh, but after this process we have still other processes uh, in in our manufacturing of palvio and heparin uh, where uh, the, the, the whole industrial process is, is, is certified by the Pasteur Taxel Institute uh, 
uh, that stating that we are uh, completely safe and that during our process we eliminate or remove the potential presence of any possible viral or prion structure. So thanks to our supply chain, thanks to our industrial process, uh, we are completely, completely sure that our products are the safest products in the market, no matter their origin. Now let's move the next question to Xavier. The COVID-19 pandemic has been challenging for businesses throughout our value chain. Can you tell us how has this impacted your organization? Well, we are lucky to belong to an organization that is producing a drug, as I said, like the heparin, that the heparin is anticoagulant, that uh, it's used uh, to combat uh, the symptoms of COVID-19. Therefore, we are an essential company. And we haven't stopped during this period. And thanks to this, or the rest of the divisions, or, uh, for instance, animal nutrition and other divisions continues working. Thanks to this a strong and effective uh, supply chain service, we have kept uh, a good service and flexibility with the clients that combine it with the new technologies that made us uh, contact the clients through uh, new technologies like teleconference, webinars, uh, uh, online trainings, etc. Uh, we have a strong our relation not only with the client, also with the staff of the clients. For us in the past, it was a little bit difficult to achieve these levels of, uh, of communion with the clients because in this moment, I could say that combine the system that we used in the past with the new systems uh, to be more close to the clients discovered thanks to COVID-19, I think that in the future we will offer a better service to our clients, but not only uh, to the managers or the technical directors, also to the whole staff and the clients of our clients too. Great initiative you have done there during COVID-19 pandemic. To finish, it will be great to know what are the next areas of development for BioIberica? Well, uh, the new areas of development of uh, BioIberica Animal Nutrition are focused in this moment in new markets and in new species. We want to develop, uh, for instance, our new our products are our new products for species that for our, for us are relatively uh, not common like uh, some poultry species like turkeys or some fin feeds uh, fin f fish uh, uh, species or for instance also we want to be uh, introduce our product for first time in ruminant animals we have enough experience with ruminants and we are involved right now in a new projects to uh, introduce our products in these fields. Moreover, we want to um, uh, take new markets that for us are new markets like uh, Africa. We are not present practically in Africa, in Middle East, and especially North America. Our experience in North America is uh, mainly uh, in Mexico, but not in Canada and United States that, as everybody knows, is one of the main markets for animal feed in this moment. Sounds like a very exciting future. Thank you to both Xavier and also Oriol for your interesting insight and for sharing your views with us. We hope you all enjoyed this and tune in for future videos from Feed Info. Thank you and have a good day.